I basically grew up as a Muslim um, and um, about a year ago um, as I was praying uh, we would normally make as Muslims rakats or salah I don't know how you want to call it um, before I leave for the office every morning I would do um, two rakats um, and one morning what started happening was as I was praying um, I started hearing within me Jesus you know and um, it bothered me but you know it, it wasn't that bad and then it became an everyday thing every day every day I'm just hearing Jesus Jesus and I'm thinking what the hell is going on and so as a Muslim obviously I get backed out of my knees and, and I'm really begging Allah for mercy and I'm saying I'm so sorry Allah you know I don't know where this Jesus thing is coming from and, and you know please forgive me you know, so my prayers of 15 minutes would now become 30 minutes because I'd be begging for mercy uh, more than I'd actually be praying. So I stopped praying altogether, you know, and uh, it was a point in my, in, my, in my life where everything started coming, crumbling down, you know, work, personal life, um, all of that. Um, and then I started praying again. And um, when I started praying again, I still heard Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And this is the most amazing thing. The one day when, when it becomes really loud and really, really shattering within me is when God sets it up that I meet with the right person, you know, and, and, and actually have this encounter with him. So he sets it up in such a way that one morning as I'm praying, he says, Jesus, and he's like shakes my soul, you know, and, I'm, and I, I actually get scared. I stop praying and I'm like, what the hell just happened here, you know? Um, and that's the morning I, I, I walk into the office and I'm, I'm really distraught, you know. Um, I obviously don't know that I'm showing it, um, but a friend of mine, a really, really good friend of mine, that I didn't even know knows God, you know. I knew her for about um, nine years and uh, we worked for the same company and everything. Um, I just always liked her. I didn't know why I liked her, you know, she's just an amazing person to be around, you know. And she says, hey Sam, why do you look, you know, so distraught? And I said, Ugh, I, I don't know, you know, everything's just, you know, crumbling and she asks me, uh, well, did you pray, you know, and in my mind, uh, I'm thinking, man, um, you know, you telling me about prayer, I mean, what do you know about prayer, but I don't say anything, you know, and then um, I say, no, I, you know, I pray, every morning I pray, you know, she says, well, you know, why don't, why don't you come to church with me, and so quite honestly, I, I do it, but I do it just to satisfy her, you know, and make her happy. And so that weekend, the Sunday, we go to church. And because I still think church was like, like it used to be, and I still have my shirt and pants and <laughs> looking all prim and proper. Everybody else is in jeans. <laughs> I felt a bit out. Anyway, um, so we come into the church, and everybody starts jamming and singing, you know, and I'm thinking, these crazy Christians, you know, <laughs> what are they doing? They come here, they're jamming, and then they leave happy. Of course they're going to be happy, you know, and I'm standing there and I'm thinking, man, I just wish I, I had a, a quiet place of solitude, you know, and, and where I could pray, you know, because the Muslim in me is still there, you know. So, um, so anyway, I mean, we, we're done with church, and I think, this is just ridiculous, you know, I'm, I'm calling it, you know. So we get back to the office, but Rosie doesn't leave me, you know, this, um, she, she keeps asking me, so how's it going, you know, have you, have you done this, have you done that, you know, she's trying to get me um, to understand, uh, to understand God and Christianity and, and, and faith and Jesus, you know, and one day I was on my, on my computer and I'm thinking, you know, let's give it another shot um, and I'll, I'll find a church close to me and then you know, I'll, I'll go and give it a try. And then Rosemary walks up. And, you know, I just couldn't lie to her. She's like, so, how's it going? And I told her, you know, Rosie, I'm trying to look for another church and, and you know, and to try this again. But quite honestly, I, I didn't get too much out of, you know, um, going to your church. Um, so she said, no, 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 wait, hang on. You know, I, I have a friend close to you, Edenvale. Um, I'll introduce you guys. You go there, you know, and, and see, see how it goes. I think... The biggest thing for me, the biggest realization that came out of this is that um, I needed to give myself completely to God. Otherwise, it would just never happen. So I, I meet Robin and, and she's just, uh, she's flowing with love, you know, she just, that's the only way I can, I can um, explain this lady. She's just amazing. I'm standing next to them, they're trying to, they're trying to make sure I'm very comfortable. 
So before the band starts, I close my eyes, I look down and I say, Jesus, if you are my savior, today is the day you need to show me. Otherwise, I'm a Muslim again. And then they start singing and my soul lights on fire, just like Whoa. And I'm like, what the hell's going on, you know? I'm feeling overwhelming love, I'm feeling all these emotions mixed up, like I don't know what, what's going on, you know, I'm just confused. I'm standing there and I'm like, what the hell's going on? And But I'm just loving it, I don't want it to stop, you know? And um, I, I know now that, you know, the Holy Spirit had baptized me, um, but I mean, I don't even know about like the Holy Spirit, you know? <laughs> what do I know of, of the Holy Spirit's baptism? But anyway, so this, this tells me, man, there's something here, you know, I mean, this this was so amazing. Um, so in my heart, in my mind, um, I met God, you know, and I understand that Jesus is my savior. So now, I go back home, life carries on, and, and now I start reading the Bible. And the Bible becomes, um, the only way I can describe it is like food. When you're very, very hungry, it starts filling the gap, filling the gap. So I'm, I'm reading the Bible and I just can't stop it. I'm eating this thing up and I'm just loving it, you know. So I, I started analyzing it, you know, and it's my job to be an analyst. So, so I, I analyze everything. So I analyzed what I've been through. And um, what I came up with was um, that I only felt that heat and that love and that, and that overwhelming wanting to just cry feeling because everybody else around me at the church was feeling very um, happy or whatever energy they were feeling. I mean, I decided it, it was probably everybody's energy. But I, now I'm, I can't let go because it was such a powerful, powerful feeling that I need to know. Because if this is God, I don't want him. I don't want him to go away. I want to be with him. I want to get closer. I want to get deeper. You know, I just want to be with him. Um, I start praying for revelation. I said, you know, God, you need to show me. God, you need to show me. But this became obsessive, compulsive prayer because. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, even if I'm going to go drink water, I'd say, God, you need to show me. God, you need to show me. God, you need to show me. And I'd, I'd be in the office, we busy on my laptop. God, you need to show me. God, you need to show me. It became like, like I was just obsessed with this now. And um, one day, when, when like I, I don't say this and I forgot about it, um, I wake up in, in our bedroom, right next to our bedroom is an open plan kitchen. And I, I walk out of um, the bedroom and on my right, I see a huge picture of, of, of light. And this light is Jesus' face. And Jesus is not as pretty as we all think he is. But it's just beautiful and it's just love and it's just um, an overwhelming feeling for me because now what's happened is I've actually had revelation of Jesus himself, God himself, came down and showed me that he exists. I mean, after that, it, I just could not stop. I'm, I mean, I'm loving, loving being a Christian. I'm loving God. It's changed my life completely. Um, I'm a different person, completely different person. I mean, if you knew who I was before and you know me now, um, you, you're seeing two different individuals completely. In, uh, in Islam, they teach you so much of fear that you don't get to know God. I, um, for the first time in my life, um, read the book um, Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus and this lady speaks about calling God Father, calling Jesus Father and that, I mean, that morning when I read that um, I closed the book and I said Father, Father and the overwhelming love that I felt come back it's just like amazing because now I have a relationship one on one with my God, my dad, my Abba, my, my father. And that's the big difference in Islam. It's just fear. Um, you're doing this wrong. Um, now I've learned about grace and, and it's such an overwhelming change. Overwhelming. You know, before we, before we went on the outreach, um, I was very drawn to evangelism and healing and all of that. Because I'm a strong believer in, in in what happened in the book of Acts, you know, and these guys weren't sitting in churches or or finding spaces that were specific to to sitting and, and praying for people and all of that. They were very very active disciples, you know. They went out, they healed people, they they spread the word of God, and that for me 
if you find somebody that's um, crippled and you tell them that your father can heal them, they want to know this father. They want to know this Jesus. And you heal them on the spot by the power of Jesus Christ. That is a huge, huge, huge impact on that person's life. It would have a huge impact on my life. Um, when we went out in, and we healed the first lady, we had a headache in Wumpy. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I was so excited because the look on her face was just like awe. She was in shock, you know, like, what the hell just happened? That really worked, you know? And then um, it was obviously daunting, you know, because you're not used to walking up, especially to people in a mall, and starting to disciple to them and talk to them about God and start to heal them. Um, you know, so it was an amazing, an amazing uh, journey, PD. Especially you ministering to us the way you did. I don't think you know how much that impacted us. It had a huge impact on us. I was so caught up in the love of God that all I wanted to do was have my whole family understand God and understand Jesus and, and know what He's done for us. Um, so what I did was I took my books and I wanted my brother to read them because I kept trying to tell him about God. So I gave him a book. Um, and what this book does is, and it's pretty scary because when I read this book, I cried for like an hour. Because what this book does is it takes history and it, it, it compares um, things that have been done by Muhammad and Jesus. And it's quite scary for a Muslim to understand the truth about somebody you believed in so much. But history shows that actually, <laughs> I hate to say it, but the Muhammad was not such a good guy. And, and you know, probably people are going to watch this and think that's such a, such a bad thing to say. But I ask you um, to please go and look it up, um, you know. And so that's, so I give, this, I give this book to my brother so he can know the truth. Um, he doesn't read it, you know. Um, his daughter reads it. And she's just blown away and she's like, Sam, is, is this true? But facts are facts, history is history, and this is what was written, and you know, I don't want to go into the details, uh, they, they're pretty gruesome, some of them, but um, you know, I, I would really, really advise any Muslims watching this to please look into it. So she says to me, but like, then how do I know, how do I know who's the real God, you know, I, I mean, I don't know, you know, um, and my advice to anybody who, who feels that way is, ask. That's what most of us do, really. We just ask. We just say, God, please show yourself to me. If it's you, Jesus, please show yourself to me. And, and you know what? Say, if it's you, Muhammad, please show yourself to me. And, and you know, I, I can almost bet you a hundred to, to none um, that Jesus will show up. Jesus will show you that he's real. Open the heavens wide.